Hello, and welcome to the third video, Little Bits of ABE Tips in the Creating the Conditions for Belonging series. Thank you for continuing the conversation with us. My name is Mel. And my name is Robin. Today we will talk about responsiveness and how being responsive with an anti-bias education mindset is essential to creating belonging for your students. We will ask you to reflect on your own awareness and actions so you can continue building your students' trust. We will share a book from our elementary curriculum and some suggestions for discussion with your students, as well as an activity you can try with any age level. And to continue building perspective, we will leave you with a self-care tip that taps into your compassion for others. To begin, I'd like to share with you a story back in my day, 1979, when I was in the ninth grade, junior high. You can giggle at it, I do. Fair is fair, here's Mel. Remember, humor is a great way to release oxytocin, the chemical in our brains. It, it's the good stress stuff. So back to the story, 1979. I had a geography teacher named Mr. Van Vliet who created a learning environment in which mutual trust existed because of his responsiveness. In the beginning of the year, it was kind of rough and rocky because he was still learning about the diverse abilities and strong personalities in our class. But he worked hard to create a community with us. By October, we were kind and helpful with each other, collaborated a lot. Mr. Van Vliet saw each and every student in the class for who they were. And as a group, we felt successful. While learning about the five themes of geography, we learned about cultures from around the world. And he encouraged us to interrupt stereotypes and develop respect across differences. He taught us how to behave ethically and consider the well being of self and others. He did this through showing us how people adapt and change to their environment. Above his chalkboard, cut out of green construction paper, he had the quote People are creatures of habit. He asked us to reflect on our habits and asked us which habits will you keep and which habits will you choose to change so you can better learn about yourself and others. Mr. Van Vliet was responsive in a way that was not shaming, but would redirect us to focus on ways that we could do our best. He never judged us on what we couldn't do, but instead focused on what we could do. He created belonging while we discovered the diversity of the world through windows and mirrors. Many of you can probably name a teacher like Mr. Van Vliet, who was responsive to every student's needs in a way that encouraged their curiosity and growth. As anti-bias educators who talk about what is going on in the world and the things that students are interested in, you recognize that you have to continually work to build strong, healthy, brave spaces. In doing so, we need to consider the hopes, concerns, needs, or struggles our most marginalized students and their families might be bringing with them. It's important for institutions, in this context, schools, to be open to all perspectives and cater to different layers of identity. Responsiveness and taking action against injustices stem from the fact that by our nature, we are empathic creatures. We show compassion to others because we can sense when they need comfort or have been hurt. We can develop and nurture meaningful relationships across differences and can identify when people around us are treated differently or unjustly because of those differences. Observe and identify where students are at on the circle. And then from there as the adults, we reflect on what they need and what we can do to respond to the student. But we should remind ourselves that taking action is done with someone rather than for someone. When we foster our empathetic nature and respect people's unique, complex identities, we create a space of equity and belonging that fosters collaborative and meaningful change. As adults tasked with facilitating this process for children, we must develop the habit of addressing bias, stereotypes, and unfairness when they occur. At the same time, we must filter our own past experiences and biases so we are not causing harm. Anti-bias educators continue to reflect on their practice. Here are some questions to guide your reflections as you continue your journey. 
How have your discussions around differences changed with your students and colleagues and family members in recent years? What language do you choose to use when describing the impact of unfair and unjust circumstances on individuals and groups? Depending on what age you teach, the answer will vary. What is the language you use with other adults? How can you help your students to recognize that they have the ability to affect positive change in the environment and the lives of others? Remember, Teacher reflection questions can be found throughout the AmazeWorks curriculum guide, as well as in every AmazeWorks lesson. The book read A Crayon Story by Michael Hall provides the opportunity to talk with children about how to be responsive to others' needs, even when adults may not be. In this story, a blue crayon is mistakenly labeled as red and struggles to find their sense of identity. Adults and peers try to help them become successful at being red they can't be read, no matter how hard they try. While the intentions of the adults and peers are to be helpful to Red, the impact of their actions leaves Red feeling miserable. This doesn't allow the discovery of all of Red's complex identity. Instead, they are focused on trying to fix or change Red. Finally, a purple crayon helps Red discover that they have been blue all along, and Red learns to embrace their identity. When Red is able to be their true self, there is no limit to what can happen. This story can be used to discuss the bias, prejudice, and stereotypes of a multitude of social identities. While the lesson may seem more focused on identity and respect across differences, responsiveness can be another focus of your discussion with students. In the story, the adults in Red's life were not responsive to their identity until the purple crayon was and this affected how they thought of themselves. It's an opportunity to talk about and reflect on how we can be more aware of the needs of others and respond in a way that makes space for everyone. Applying the anti-bias education tenets of empathy and understanding, as well as responsiveness and action are key to making a space for all and paying attention to where students are at in their journeys, academically, socially, and culturally. You can filter out biases of your students' identities by paying attention to whether or not their struggles are voiced and identifying ways to broadly name them. Students want to know you see them for all of who they are. When this responsiveness is not present, you will see mistrust, which hinders belonging and learning. In order to be responsive, anti-bias educators know their students' social identities and understand their opinions, even as they grow and change. One activity you can do with your students of any age is called Put Yourself on the Line. This activity unpacks social differences and opinions so you can be more responsive. It also gives students an opportunity to tell you and their peers things about themselves. To lead this activity, make a line across the room. One side should be marked strongly agree, while the other is marked strongly disagree. The middle position can be marked undecided or I don't have an opinion. This middle position is a good place for non risk takers or students who want to pass on sharing about their identity, experience, or opinions. As you read each statement, invite students to find their place on the line. Be sure your statements offer some variety of risk, as this activity can be stressful for students who may feel singled out by some statements. Some examples of statements you could use for younger students include, sweets are better than salty snacks. People learn from their mistakes. One should never climb dangerous mountains. Always do what your friends do so you won't be left out. It's important to always please your teacher. Examples of statements you could use for older students include life is fair. How you act in a crisis shows who you really are. Love conquers all. What goes around comes around. Doing what's right means obeying the law. At the end of the activity, offer time for reflection and discussion. Reflection questions could include, what did you learn? Why is making your opinion public sometimes important? And why is recognizing individual opinions important? 
Why is it important not to put down other people's opinions? Is that hard or easy? Did you have a temptation to change your position once you looked around you? Afterwards, acknowledge your students' bravery and invite them to share appreciation of their community. Ask them to reflect by finishing the following sentences like, I felt good when, or one thing I like about this class or group is. When doing activities like this with your students, take time before you begin to remind students of your classroom agreements and expectations for discussion. Remind them to tell only their own story and what is shared here stays here. Refer to pages 11 through 13 in your elementary curriculum guide for a deeper understanding of these guidelines. It's also important to remember to consistently interrupt and discourage any hurtful speech or actions in the moment. Taking action means being responsive in the moment and children will notice and internalize this responsiveness. And make sure to follow up and check in with individual students that may need it afterwards. This responsiveness will show youth that you care and you will build their trust. Being continually responsive to our students' needs takes an enormous amount of compassion. Compassion is empathy in action and compassion building helps us to have the perspective we need to be responsive educators. Practicing compassion is good for our bodies. When we do so, our heart rate slows and stress hormones decrease. This allows us to think more clearly, collaborate more effectively, and we are less likely to act on our biases. One way to practice compassion is through a meditation in which you direct your attention to another person. This can be someone you love, someone you know is going through a hard time, or even a student or colleague you have had a difficult time with. You can practice a compassion meditation any time of the day, and it will likely help you feel better. For an example of a compassion meditation, see the resource page sent along with this video for a link to a meditation that focuses on cultivating compassion for difficult people by Elena Aguilar, the author of the book Onward, Cultivating Emotional Resilience in Educators. You may find that you need to interrupt a fight, flight, freeze, or appease response before you can focus on a meditation. One breathing technique you can try comes from yoga and it's called pranayama. So you're going to take your two fingers and you'll close off one of your nostrils. It goes like this, close off and through the open nostril, breathe in, close off, switch and exhale, breathe in, switch and exhale, breathe in, Close off the nostril and switch and exhale. Breathe in, switch. Exercises like this will help you practice compassion for others and also for yourself. It's important to be mindful of the compassion you give yourself. Just like with others, when you can acknowledge your emotions and accept your own humanity, you will be less hard on yourself. Occurrences of mistrust and injustice are unfortunately still a part of everyday life. Bias, prejudice, and stereotypes and discrimination continue to find their way into social and work groups, pop culture, politics, and classrooms. Developing a strong sense of identity and critical thinking skills can help us reject internalization of these negative messages and build important resilience skills to turn to in the face of bias-based mistreatment. Stay engaged in uncomfortable conversations about race, gender, class, and other differences, and be willing to own, apologize for, and redress the harmful impacts of bias, prejudice, and stereotypes on others. Thank you for joining us today. Being here with us is an example of how deep your compassion is for those you teach. Until we see you again, be well.